like a little bee sting. stops burning. Does it stop burning? Just a little bit of numbing medicine. That's all. You're going to do the catheterization from underneath. That will allow your hand to fall gently and comfortably along your uh, uh, lower abdomen and so we can, uh, you know, we can do this procedure nice and comfortably just as we would from the, uh, from the uh, groin but with a lot less discomfort, not poking in the, uh, We use the uh, hole in the left femoral uh, region, the left leg, uh, the, the drape has a hole in it for the right and the left side, and we use the left hole to put over the wrist to keep everything sterile, and now we just have to move the hand off the arm board and uh, lie it uh, on, the, uh, on the patient's uh, lower abdomen. and just slide the drape so that everything is kept sterile. We use the same drape that we would use for femoral artery catheterization and the same setup with the uh, physician standing to the right of the patient and looking across the patient's uh, body at the screens to see the uh, fluoroscopy images. And that makes it very convenient for the cath lab staff because some doctors prefer to do the procedure through the, the legs and uh, and so the same setup is used. We've lifted her up a little bit, about 20 degrees, and that just lets her hand flop. It's uh, pronated, the wrist is pronated, so we can go in underneath very nicely through our catheter, and we can easily flush the sheath. So the setup is pretty easy. And, uh, and now we'll begin our heart catheter. For the operators and for the staff, so that uh, we maintain that protective atmosphere environment for those who do this a lot. From the left, it's very easy to maneuver into the uh, ascending aorta. It's much more difficult from the right. And from the left, it's a piece of cake to redirect the wire. tricks like deep breath and deep inspiration. From the left, it's not necessary. The catheters go very smoothly. You can go with the JR or JL. I'm going to need your help here. Right now. Ready? Let's do it. Ready? Pull back. And so we just walk it back. We have an exchange length wire so we don't have to recross into the ascending aorta. We have our wire right there. Now we'll go in with the uh, Judkins left. The app size is smaller than we typically use for the femoral approach. I use the JL 3.5.
pretty quick procedure. I don't think we need to give any more uh, dilators at this point. Otherwise, we would give a little bit of uh, a vasodilator. So let's just take your hand down a little bit. Let's pull this back. has a, uh, an artery that's very close to the skin, so it doesn't require uh, a hunting deep for the artery, and it's very well anesthetized with just a very minimal amount of uh, medication, so it's more comfortable. It also, uh, there's a lot less risk of bleeding because um, the artery, again, is uh, quite close to the skin, and so simple pr pressure uh, will prevent bleeding. If it should re-bleed when we take off this little bandage, then we can, um, um, uh, we can immediately apply uh, pressure with one or two fingers and just uh, uh, create a situation where there's no excess of bleeding. And it's easily done. It's as effective as the procedures done from the leg. So you have a similarly effective procedure with much less risk for complication. The most common complication of heart catheterization is bleeding at the groin site. Sometimes it's luck, we're lucky and we capture it and we see that the, the, the leg turns blue and we, we, we immediately apply pressure. Other times it bleeds into the pelvis and is not noticeable until the blood pressure starts to drop and the patient doesn't feel good, feels like they're fainting. And, uh, and then we find that there's one or two units of blood that's sitting in the pelvis so we have to uh, keep the patient two or three days in the hospital and then a month the patient is walking uh, with a limp because of, of pain in the, in the site of the, of the catheterization. There also is an increased risk of hitting nerves the, uh, in the leg. The nerves run in a bundle with the vein and the artery. And so, especially after scar tissue forms for multiple procedures, patients have had multiple stents, multiple heart procedures, and they, um, they, uh, they're at more, uh, greater risk that when we puncture the artery, we're, we're wrapping our, our needle in amongst the fibrous tissue that can sometimes affect the nerve and cause discomfort uh, later and beyond the, the procedure, not just at the time of the procedure. So it's a safer, a lot of a safer procedure. Um, and, uh, and what we have found is that it's very easily uh, uh, performed by uh, operators who've been traditionally trained in femoral technique. I've been doing heart catheterization from the femoral artery for the last 15, 20 years and uh, switched over to the radial technique six months ago. And by our technique, the catheters just dive in a location. They're very easily, uh, they very easily find their their target. It doesn't require a lot of training. Whereas from the right side, the the catheters enter the heart, and then they make an inverse S. They go down the subclavian artery and they go into the heart, and they make an S. Whereas from the the left wrist, there's more of a natural C. And when we look at our catheters, we have catheters. Do you show us catheters? Just hold the jail, the jail, jail, the jail, jail. You see our catheters make a, make a C, our standard catheters. And these catheters will come across the aorta and go into the, and go into the heart just as they would from the artery from the groin. Whereas from the right wrist, they go in and they turn like an S. And our catheters are just not S's, they're C's. And some of the specialized catheters really don't work well for operators like myself that have done this technique or are learning to do this technique um, and haven't been doing it for, for, for five or ten years. Uh, uh, the experienced operators that have been doing radial technique for ten years uh, um, in certain locations, especially in Quebec and some other places in Europe, that they, they have no difficulty performing the procedure from the right or the left. I, you know, uh, after a thousand cases, I, uh, I can do anything blindfolded. But, uh, but to switch from the femoral procedure, where I've done over a thousand procedures, to uh, the arm, uh, I would like the same type of uh, procedure. And this can be accomplished on the left side. And uh, with the technique that we described and which we uh, wrote about in a letter in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, Cardiovascular Interventions, that was published this month in the, or last month in the April ed edition. And we describe how we do it. 
and, and, and uh, to make it readily applicable to doctors that want to convert from doing the traditional femoral approach to the radial approach. The other advantage is that there's a shorter hospital stay. In her case, she's going to go home whether I did it from the femoral artery or from the, uh, the wrist. Uh, the femoral artery, she might lie flat for two or three hours with a, with a, a, a sealant or if we, if we held pressure manually for, for, for six hours before going home. In this procedure, she can sit up immediately. She doesn't have to lie flat at all. She's much more comfortable. The, uh, if I had performed a coronary intervention, where we actually balloon and dilate the artery and put a stent in, then we give uh, heavy anticoagulants. And I don't send my patients home from the femoral approach because I know that they might bleed an hour or two later after we bring them upstairs. So those patients stay overnight routinely for femoral approach and angioplasty or, or intervention. The uh, angioplasties that I perform from the wrist, I often send the patient home unless I find that the patient has multiple stents implanted, areas that I'm concerned about that might re or re-narrow. There are occasions when I will hospitalize my patient for, uh, for an angioplasty that I perform from the wrist, but the, the large majority of my patients have get their blood thinners, we watch their artery for a couple hours and then we send them home. We don't keep them overnight in the hospital if we do the procedure from their wrist. So they have a shorter hospital stay. This procedure was performed with a reasonable thoroscopy time. The uh, thoroscopy time was 1.5 minutes in the AP camera and uh, 0 0.8 minutes in the uh, lateral camera for a grand total of 2.3 uh, minutes for total thoroscopy time, which is a safe uh, uh, level of radiation when we uh, consider that sub the, uh, the risk is associated with higher radiation levels in the femoral artery and the right. amount of radiation given to the patient. She did not get excessive radiation doing the procedure from the wrist compared to what would be standard from the, from the groin. Uh, again, uh, uh, physicians like myself trained from the groin have been doing these procedures, over a thousand procedures, and can do this uh, very easily and quickly from the groin. We do not want to spend a lot of time finding the arteries and getting our catheters into the arteries um, uh, to do it from the wrist because it would provide excessive radiation exposure to the patient. So we would like a procedure that, uh, that is performed in equal fashion, and I believe this one is equally efficacious and also gives the patient an equal dose of radiation.